Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Ultimate Pool. This is day two of action. We're down to the last 32 players. And this match between Shane Thompson and John Rowe gives me great pleasure to welcome professional commentator Eddie Barker by my side. He's just literally going from table to table commentating today. Good afternoon Nick and good afternoon all you Ultimate Pool fans out there. Looking forward to this game. Good match up here between um, the two old muckers, Shane Thompson and John Rowe. And how do you see this one going, Nick? Well, it's one of those, isn't it? I mean, it's it's literally a toss of a coin. Um, I probably make Shane just a, a squeak of a favourite, but th there's very much uh, there's very little in it. And um, Shane, of course, is um, he needs to win one of the events um, this weekend to uh, match Chris Melling's record of, of winning um, every season. Um, this is his last chance because, of course, that's a that's a record you can never go back and rectify, isn't it? So it's, uh, it's unless, now or never. Unless he wins the Taunton singles back home, then you know we might give him that. <laughs> But, um, um, uh, uh, an ultimate pool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that'll be some achievement if Shane does do that. Yeah, yeah, it's only Chris Manning that's uh, that's achieved that. Which is, um, I mean, it's it it's uh, it, it doesn't mean anything, but it's just another little feather in the cap, isn't it? Yeah, well, it does mean something. You know, his his name's going to go down in history as one of only two people to do that, but. There's a long, long way to go before we can really start thinking about that because, you know, he's got to win this match and another four matches against absolutely top quality opposition. He's played a lovely positional shot there to get on this yellow that was slightly awkward. Can he avoid the red that he's closest to here because that could affect his positional play? Yeah, he's avoided it nicely and he's played that to perfection. So he's looking in good stroke here, Shane Thompson in the first frame. was um, you know, a four-time winner with Ultimate Pool, so it's a well-trodden path for him. He does know how to navigate these fields. John Rowe, conversely, yet to lift the trophy with Ultimate Pool, but uh, you know, former world champion, he knows winning ways. And he did well to get 32 seconds, however, poor Christoph couldn't beat it. And... Um, when you're sitting there in your chair on 32 seconds, you're thinking you're out of the tournament. And, you know, the ball god said, no, you're still in. And um, I'm a big believer in the fact if you get a let off early doors that you, you tend to go, you know, it could be your event. My player this so weekend, tip. I'm going to go for uh, Carla Donoghue. He's only rejoined the ranks this year, but I don't think he's ever going to be far away from, from lifting a trophy such a, a high quality player and he seems to be kind of recreating his, his best form he's not quite there yet but uh, he's getting there and um, I think he's, he's he offers a bit of value in this field yeah he definitely offers value um, and I don't think his standard ever dips too much I think you know you're going to have to play really well to beat him John McAllister's got a toughie next as well. He's got a toughie in Cole Bedford because there's a player. Mm -hmm. I mean, he beat Ronan McCarthy yesterday, seven-one. Mm -hmm. I don't think Cole. I don't think Cole would. Um, he loves playing players like like Ronan. Um, I'm not sure he'd relish the game against John McAllister. But if he does find his groove um, and he starts buzzing, then John could have a have a handful there. Yeah. Well. Um Cole Chaos Bedford when he steamrollers oppositions he's, he, he steamrollers them I mean I was playing actually on the table next to him yesterday against the Ronan and that match must have been done in under half an hour and I, I honestly think it last the whole match lasted less time than the deciding frame between Neil Raybon and Gary Clark who were on that table beforehand <laughs> that's how quickly he took him out and I don't think Ronan did a lot wrong it's just one of those things where Cole had the opportunities and he's a good enough, fast enough player to take him out in double quick time. Little hand in the air there from Shane, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I mean it wasn't it wasn't as planned I and mean, he's landed on this red. But um, this was always going to be a backup ball if he didn't get to where he wanted. 
He's just a very friendly guy. Yeah. Needs a little angle here. He may have finished a bit straight. I think he's probably okay. I think he can force an angle. He needs to screw back. He showed you where he needs to be on that right-hand side cushion. So there might just be enough here. He's, he's a great cueist. I mean, the the effortless, absolutely effortless. I mean, he's got a, his Q-tips nearly 10 mil. It's something like 9.8. And the action he gets on a cue ball with just such an effortless cue action is, is it just shows what a great cue action it is. Yeah, he's got he's got very soft soft hands, I suppose you'd call it. He's um Oof. I say that commentators curse <laughs> as he plays um a bit of a shocker there. He looks like he had actually a little bit more angle on it than he wanted. Yeah, he didn't get the cannon he wanted, he was looking for a full ball contact mm. and he only got a half ball. And now he's in a spot of bother. Yeah, but gen generally his cue ball control is exemplary. Um, he, he just plays gentle screw screw shots and he gets maximum reaction which is really how you should be playing the shots I mean I personally play with oh, that's a great shot. effort I personally play with quite a large tip as well about nine and a half mil I've heard so that about you <laughs> so I'm not far behind him and um, I think as long as you as long as you're holding the cue correctly you're, you know your technique's fine you know it um, you should be able to play the game just as well with a larger tip as well as a smaller tip. I think you get that further element of control as well. So John's just played a bit of a loose one there. Just a little puff of his cheeks as he walked around the table. He's giving himself a little bit more to do on this shot than he wanted to, but he's put away nicely. He's back in prime position. The obvious slight issue would be the yellow down the left-hand side cushion you'd probably want as your last ball for the eight ball because that way you can just drop it in and be on the eight ball and have to play a positional shot so let's see how he goes about this the thing is he's got a lovely angle here just to drop in behind it so that might be in his thinking as well but no he has decided to go that way and leave the the yellow down the, the left hand cushion till last. Just needs to land, land straight. Make sure he's not dicing with the, the centre pocket and he's played that to perfection. And I did actually commentate on John Rowe at the, the previous weekend up here in the Grand Hotel in Blackpool and um, he absolutely flew through his match against Emma Cunningham that day. With, he looked so fluent and um, I thought he's going to take some stopping but Maybe he's just hasn't got the consistency at the moment because every time I see him play, he plays really well. He's unrivaled. So it's so difficult to get a run going. You need to be playing at your peak. Your break needs to be working to perfection. You need your opponent to miss the odd chance. All these things oh. need to come together. Look at this for John. And that's the sort Shane of gets a dry break and it's disgusting. <laughs> that, do you know something? That, that's... At least I can see it happens to um, other people now because that happened to me twice yesterday. But twice I potted a ball, and I'm thinking, God, I've got, I, what do I do here? I can't even play a safety shot without leaving my opponent a chance. And um, sometimes I do yeah. feel, sometimes I do feel that's more important off the break of shot than potting a ball. It's actually the chances that you leave, whether you pot yeah. one or you don't. Yeah. Eagle-eyed ref. Just watching that for a potential. Double hit. It was a good shot. Yeah, he's played that nicely. Not left Shane anything. In fact, probably left Shane in a spot of bother here. <coughs> he's looking at some kind of cannon or plant. Maybe off the red into the middle. So I've just seen who we've got ref in this game. We've got Robin ref in. So we've got Batman commentating. We've got Robin ref in. <laughs> oh, he must be the penguin. Nick. He's got one. The hand's going in the air again. I must be the penguin. No, I'm the joker. Uh, no, we've got Jimmy Cox. <laughs> oh, we've got Jimmy. Ch yeah, of course we do. Yeah. Maybe the Riddler. <laughs> Robin, um, I, I I came in the comms box on the last on the last game, and I noticed that there's a couple of glasses wipes left just in front of me, and that's Robin. He's literally had a look at what game I'm going to be doing. He's just popped in and put a couple of glasses wipes on on, on the desk for me. Oh, what a lovely um, to even think of that. Yeah, top guy. Good man. So, here's an interesting fact about Shane Thompson for you. So, um, last weekend, 
I was actually out of my hometown of Hemel Hempstead. I was down in Prestatyn playing in the Champion of Champions event, which uh, my team, Rax Wafton, we got to the quarterfinals, losing to the eventual winners. But whilst I was down in Prestatyn, a um, young Shane Thompson was at my home football ground. So he was down there with um, Taunton FC playing against Hemel Hempstead with my, my boys, Frankie and Vinny, play for Hemel Whites and Hemel Yellows in their age groups. And um, it's about a five-minute walk from my house, and Shane didn't even send me a text to say that he was coming down Goodness there. Goodness me. Can you believe that? Uh, wow. The, the mighty Hemel Town, the, the Tudors, went on to beat Taunton 1-0, I believe. So um, and take that. Let's just clarify a couple of things here. Firstly, oh. there's absolutely no way Shane Thompson paid to get in. No. Because I think one of his sponsors is Taunton, Taunton Town, yeah, so yeah, that's three right, tickets yeah. and probably... Yeah. Some kind of some kind of VIP meal beforehand or something, yeah. you know, if they and do you, such a thing. You can guarantee one thing as well. He did not buy around all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, brilliant. I went. Uh, funnily enough, I mean, we're, not, we're we're just going off piece there for a second, but John's going through a going through this clearance. Um, um, I used to I used to follow Yeovil Town absolutely everywhere back in the day, probably 15 years ago, and I, I went to see them last weekend. First time I've I've been to see them in probably I don't know th four years I would imagine but uh, I'm 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 the same I'm one of those pr um, what Eric Cantona would have described as a prawn sandwich brigade because um, my wife um, her company has a, a box at the football what a mess from John has a box at the football and the box was available last weekend so I took my son and a load of his mates up to up to watch it mm. and that, that that was. Uh, so you see, you are definitely prawn sandwich brigade. <laughs> got a box. Right? Yeah. Yeovil Town, top of the league. Won they, fourteen um, games in a row now, I think, or unbeaten fourteen games in, in a row. Are they in the same league as Hemel and Taunton? Um, I, don't I don't think, think so. so. They're in. I mean, they they used to be first division, but yeah, they've gone down, down, higher, down, down. They? They're yeah. uh, they are in the um, um, national league Southern or something nowadays. I mean, mm. it's it's down in the depths, but. Um, it's good to see the top of the league. They actually broke the um, they broke the record for the um, the league attendance a couple of weeks ago when they played Weymouth. Um, they had uh, the the previous league record was five thousand five hundred. Uh, they had seven seven uh, seven thousand three hundred there watching the game. I think it just shows you that great attendance. It doesn't. That, it that doesn't level, yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter what level you're playing at. They just mm. need to be winning. Yeah, fantastic. But Shane here has just run out of position slightly. Yeah, I mean, John missed the red. Yeah. Into the bottom right-hand pocket. It was a little bit tight on the yellow. That's probably what caused him to miss it. But this is tough here for Shane. Oh, that's and a top shot. Man. That is a fantastic shot. Oh, he's how's he going to do this, though? He's on the cushion. He needed. He left the perfect angle. If he's a couple of inches off the cushion here, he can dig down and try and develop that red. But as it is, he can do nothing with the cue ball. He's in a spot of bother now. Yeah, this is probably the right shot. Just trying to get the cue ball in behind the other yellow. Very delicate shot. Mm, it's it's always very it. tough. I think with that shot, if that was me, I think I'd prefer to have just nudged the yellow over the top right hand pocket there. Just to play a bit safety and yeah. give give John something to do, but you know, the only real issue here for John the eight ball, is, it? is the eight ball, but and he's got to make sure he lands on something just after this shot. It's never that easy to control the cue ball when it's in the pocket. Yeah, it's got away from him a fraction. I mean, he, he does. I think he can get through to the potting angle of the eight. I'm not sure. He does have an angle on the one at the top of the table that he could screw across and dislodge it now. So maybe he thinks that he can. I think he must think that he can get to it. And he's putting in some mileage with the cue ball here. If that if he can't get to the potting angle of the eight ball, he needs to do something to develop. And he won't be doing it from this shot because he doesn't have the angle. Well, yeah, I mean, if you f I think if he leaves the cue ball where it is now, he can get to the potting angle. I think. Yeah, no, I'm certainly can. I don't think this would be a major issue for John. I just wondered if he could get past that yellow, but he clearly can. Yeah, that's fine. So John Rowe is going to take the lead. He uh, had a prelim. Yeah, there's um. Just looking to see if there's any 
notables. Morgan McInnes is um, through to the 132, as is Joe Prince. Names that uh, are always there. Wayne Fryer. And uh, Scott Pope is on the hill against Mark Williams. Always How about any of the guys that might be vying for the number one position? Yeah, I mean, it's such a. Are they in action yet? No, there's. Um, There's still everything to play for with 16 players getting promotion. Um. Anyway, while you're looking it up, Nick, John's just produced a, a lovely break. Selected Red Bulls. Red Bulls in play. I think really any one of those players, you know, if they win an event this weekend, they're going to go pro. They're going to get get themselves into the top 16. Yeah. Just with the, I think it's. 6,000 or may no 4,000 points on offer maybe so uh, <coughs> I mean if we look at if we look at the rankings in that challenger we see that um, Connor Treacy, Dave Hogan, Kyle Cope have pretty much sealed the deal They're in the top three I mean there's a couple there that can be caught and then Behind that, the players, uh, three, four, five thousand points be back is players like Joshua Has, Ryan Davy, Tom Morrow, Tom Jones from Liverpool, Jamie Burnett, the Scotsman, Morgan McInnes, Ryan Pisani, Andy Patchett, Christy Colefield, Sean Sharkey, Ryan Lambeth. And these are all players that you kind of expect to see up in the top half and then just outside the top 16. You know, Neil Toms, who is uh, the event organiser, the event, uh, what do they call it? Kind of tournament managers. director. Tournament director, that's the words I was looking for. Neil Toms somehow has, finds himself in 18th place, and um, you know, if he has a good weekend, he's got a chance of turning pro, and how he does that on top of everything else he does in this weekend <coughs> is beyond me. Um, Ross Dunn from around the Gloucester area. Toby Bolt is another one that we're familiar with. All these players, Scott Pope, Scott Yardley, Lee Kendall, the chairman, the governor. All these people are just outside the top 16, so it's going to be interesting to see how their weekends go. Anyway, Nick, where you've been, what can the safe cracker do from here? Still early days, over half an hour left. Keeps pushing that ball. It's a couple of times he's done that now. He pushes it towards that top left corner pocket, and it's got kicked in. Yeah, well, it's if you push it towards the if you push it towards the pocket, it's always likely to get kicked in yeah. by another ball. You've yeah. just got to keep it away from that sort of ten inches area, away from that pocket. He'll consider himself unlucky, but the, the, the cue ball just—that's not what you're looking for when you break. You're looking for the cue ball back at the middle of the table. He will consider himself unlucky because both these reds and yellows. I'm quite well, very well placed. Yeah, he's going to find himself, almost certainly find himself for one behind. Yeah, selected to go for yellows here, probably because it's just that slight bit easier to get onto the eight ball at the end of it. Just be looking to leave him, just to roll this through, maybe about. 8 or 10 inches so that you can just drop the next yellow into the centre pocket and bring the cue ball out towards the centre of the table. Might be a bit, bit more of an issue if he leaves this straightish. Yeah, nothing for straight here. Nothing for short really either. I mean, short's better than straight, but you just want to run it through and leave your angle. Yeah, he's, he's come... He's come on the short side, that's uh, still fine. He's got a lovely angle just to run the cue ball on and off the side cushion. Doesn't want to be hampered and he's not. Cue ball just runs far enough. Oh, a nice angle now. He's going to be running back up the right hand side of the table is looking at the eight in the middle uh, it looks like a 
probably a bit more of an acute angle than it actually is. Um, some players' preference would be to run the cue ball up table and play it down to bottom right. John is going to pop it in the middle. As I say, it probably looks a little bit more acute than it actually is. Yeah, well played. I think um, some players, Chris Melling for sure, would tell you to get that cue ball on the on the line, just simply because you get the, the best extension. The more extension you get of the of the cue, then the more power you get. But actually, you know, John's not a. You can see they're an inch and a half back from the the bulk line. Um, you you kind of want to strike the cue ball where you've got optimal speed of cue, optimal power. But there is a trade-off about getting the um, um, about, about accuracy as well. So some some players will bring it just a tad closer to make sure that they don't lose the accuracy. Yeah, I, th I think it's each to their own on the break of shot, and you find something that works for you, and you you, you either stick with it, or if it doesn't work, then you change it. And um, you know what you said about Chris there. I mean, who's going to argue with his break, you know, and his knowledge of the game? But and you know, if you do put it on the line, and you're queuing off the cushion, then there's a far bigger gap between the um, your hand and the cue ball, so there's more opportunity to not hit the centre of the cue ball. Um, and also, I, I, I'm a firm believer, and I, you, can, you can see it off John's break there, and John's got one of the biggest games, biggest breaks in the game. I believe you generate a lot of the power through the follow-through. So I think if you bring it back a touch, and you're queuing off the cushion, the, off the top cushion, you do get through the cue ball a, bit, a lot more if, you, if, you, if the cue ball's a little bit closer to you. So not too close, enough to generate you know, a, a good backswing, and good f but also make sure you get a good follow-through as well. But again, in this match, the balls are favouring John Rowe. And Shane is making that himself very comfortable over there in that corner. Yeah, he'll be fearing the worst now, if looking staring down the barrel of a 5-1. Well, that's not ideal. That was the previous shot. Yeah. It was the previous shot that wasn't so good. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't do an awful lot more with that shot. Just, just left too much angle. Mm. Either way. I think John will be fine. He's got to mind his shirt on that red ball at the top of the table. The gentle shot he's played that with bottom and check side oh just wow, to slow the cue ball. Beautiful. And he's played it lovely. That's so well controlled. Just killed the cue ball. That's delightful. That really is a lovely shot. He's gone towards the other pocket now. He manages to um, to avoid the off, but he consistently pushing it towards those top corners. He needs to address that. And he'll be happy with that. And on first glance, it looked like yellows. But having seen the layout of the balls and the easy way to finish, I would not be surprised if he plays on the reds here. But no, that with the eight ball the way it is, it has to be yellows. Just means he's got to go from left to right on the table. With yeah. the reds, he could have just stayed around the middle of the table. But the eight ball doesn't, doesn't lend itself to that. When you, on the face of it, this looks like an easy clearance, but the, he, the problem is the two yellows left and right of the table. He cannot leave this yellow that he's just played on as his last ball because he can't transition across the, uh, sorry, his, his penultimate ball. Yeah. Um, so he had to get on one of these now to then leave a ball to be able to transition across to the right-hand side of the table. So he saw the pattern early, which is good. He's just got the wrong angle here that he would have wanted. He would have liked to have screwed back between the two reds and may just be able to still do it and use the top cushion that's okay it's not exactly what he played he got a little glance on the way through um, which is just again left it a bit of a fiddly angle he, he kind of liked to play the one to middle and kill it but he's got too much angle there's a big angle, angle on the one to top left as well he can looks like he can just drop this in he might be screwing off the top cushion here yep yeah. No, oh no, you could just, it. just kill the pace. Again, that's not ideal. Did he get a little, felt like he got a little brush on the on the red maybe on the way past? Yeah, he did. So we just, yeah. just got to judge the pace right here because it will be coming at quite a straight line off of the right-hand side cushion. Yeah. So that's where he wants the cue ball, round about there. This is horrible, really. I mean, compared to what it could have been, if, if he's just, if he's a couple of inches off the cushion, this is so simple. But it's made harder and he's got a screw on and off the side. 
executed it beautifully there. Fantastic recovery shot. Such a lovely touch. I mean, people talk about cue actions, and um, you know they t often say, you know, who's got the best cue action? The Rolls Royce or cue actions? We were talking about it. We had a bit of a debate on. Um, wow, well, I don't know. I mean, it goes through the gap. I think. Yeah, he's put his hand up to apologise. Quite sure what he was trying to do there. Yeah, Eddie. that was he was just trying to develop the black, but it wasn't wasn't really necessary. Um, but he's landed on the shot. He's got it. Oh, oh, he has not got it. That wow. I think it was just simply because he played it so slow. Yeah, when he, it when probably he played went over it, a finger mark. It looked I, when he played it, it looked mm. middle pocket, and then it, it seemed to t get a finger mark, and it's just... Wow. Goodness me. So, can John get through to a pot on the red? Either, yeah. the, either the red closest to the cue ball in the top left, or can he get through to the red closest to the left centre? Because you don't really want to be playing a snooker from here, so he's he's actually playing a tricky shot here. Using his, is he already taking his extension? No, he's he's got an extension. He's fine. Yeah, he's used it now. Oh, that pace! That was risky, but what a great first shot there from John. And um, yeah, this will really hurt Shane. Yeah, this was the way back into the game 5-2 he's still got a sniff but it's 6-1 you think you think it's gone um, he had to make that eight. yeah it was an unusual shot I don't that, that he I played to get on the black Eddie I don't know why he didn't just take his medicine and either leave it long I mean he played some amazing shots length of the table up the cushion yesterday either leave that long maybe it was just a bit too shallow to drop into the middle so just land it and, and, and trust that you're going to pot it. Like, the only way it could go wrong is if he tries to develop it. Yeah, it was an unusual choice by Shane, especially after the great positional shot he played on the previous shot as well. This is too hard. Yeah, but he's got a bonus. He's just got to pot it now, and he's just pot it. Again, look at the side. Weight. Look at the side. He's, he's probably putting a bit of left-hand side on this. He probably doesn't even need it on that shot, but he's played it with the left anyway. And he, he d doesn't he play them shots well? Yeah, but that's because they're not. Um, when you play it with check side like that, they're not. They're, they're not easy. No, no. Quite often the object ball that you're playing just throws slightly, so you have to take that into account. He's played it really well. That's another top clearance from John Rowe. That's what you get if you order a John Gale um, uh, Scott Gillespie off wish, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you deal with Scott on that one, Nick. There's nothing to do with me. Anyway, John Rowe, smash. Well, that red, that last red moving. Has maybe come and spoiled the party a little bit, but yeah. he's got a little bit of thinking to do now, more than anything, but these balls have exploded. I think that really he's looking at a three ball plant here and um, maybe just see, you know, just seeing how, how the, making sure he's on his next ball and just seeing how the, the object ball comes out. Or is he going to look at potting the red? No, he's going yellows. He's going yellows and he's going to try and squeeze that yellow in between the red and the jaw of the top left pocket, which could open the game. This comes off. That could be good night, Vienna. And it has. Declan Brennan's on the hill against uh, Mark Fleming, 6 3. The same scoreline, Rob Warren over Syfit Simmons. Rob Warren leads. And John Rowe leads this for a 7 1 and very convincing win against Shane Thompson. Yeah, his awkward ball's the yellow on the top cushion. He's tried to get on it. He tried to get it on it when he was when he developed the balls, but he just screwed the cue ball back a little bit too far. But he's got an angle edge at the top through. Has he gone enough? We'll tell by the body language. I think he just has. Yeah, he's yeah, fine. Just enough. Yeah, he's looking at it from that angle, which tells me he's probably going to be playing this with a little bit of top and a bit of left-hand side just to help it run through off two cushions. 
There it is. And now John Rowe is one good positional shot away from a famous 7-1 victory. Can he pinch this back or does he need to go bottom cushion? If he needs to go bottom cushion, it's a tough shot. Bottom cushion. Come back up between the yellow mm. and the black. At least judge this well then. Don't play it too hard, otherwise the left centre pocket comes into play. Oh, that's lovely. That's nice. Be more than happy with that. You can just stand out and take the eight in the left centre. I think he's scoring back, is he, for the same pocket? Oh, he is. What a performance from John Rowe. Very nice. Shane Thompson out of his chair already. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Shane took it well. 